Hi everybody, this is Pat in the paper closet. Um, here today I'm going to show you how I make a, a cover to my junk journal. Now this tutorial will show you how to make a 9 by 6 cover. It will be made with a paper bag. This will be our base and it will be covered with printed copy paper on the outside and also copy paper printed on the inside. That'll be our liner. So out of one paper bag, this is a large, you know, grocery supermarket paper bag. I simply cut off one of the full front panels. You see here the whole front panel is missing. Uh, here's another one that we could use. We can get two large ones out of one paper bag. But you can also get a smaller one out of these side panels. If you wanted to make a... What was the size of the smaller one? Let's see. I have it here. This size. Um, it would have to be a little bit smaller like half an inch smaller. This one is, how tall is this? Seven, so you'll be probably six and a half by four and a half. So in making a book this size though, when you're using eight and a half by 11 inch printed paper, you will have to trim all your papers down. Whereas when we make the larger one, you just take your eight and a half by eleven and fold it in half and it fits inside the cover. So we're gonna make one using our panel that I cut out of a bag. And here it is. And the only thing we have to do, we have to cut it down to twelve and three eighths wide by ten inches tall because we're going to do a wrapped cover. No, that's wrong. Don't listen to me. <laughs> my numbers were in my head. Hold on. We're going to make it, let's see, we want it six inches and six inches, that's 12. And we want a quarter of an inch spine. That's 12 and a quarter. And they always leave about an eighth of an inch to allow for the folding of our cover. So 12 and 3 eighths wide by 9 inches high. That's what we're going to cut this at. Now I'm going to use my paper trimmer, which of course I forgot to get out. Hold on a second. Okay, I have my paper trimmer. Now I want to see if I can get a straight edge to cut them. This side of the bag looks pretty straight. I'm going to use my mat. Mm, not too straight there. Okay, let's start with the side piece. I'm going to trim off the side piece and make it straight. I had this all figured out before. Plus, when I get on video, I can't remember what I'm doing. But we'll get it. Okay, I'm going to line up this edge right across the top of my cutter. I'm going to get a straight cut here. Just so I have a straight edge. Alright, so this will be Why am I so confused? Okay, we need 12 and 3 eighths on this piece. I'm going to Push this through here. Get out my extension ruler. Now I want this at. Turn it around. <laughs> the uneven side is what I'm cutting off. I want the straight side over here. Alright, 12 and 3 eighths. Now I know you probably can't see this. 
Let me see if I can get it in camera. There we go. 12 and 3 eighths on my ruler. 12 and a quarter, 12 and 3 eighths. Lining up the top along this edge so it's straight. And I'm gonna cut that off, 12 and 3 eighths. Have an extra piece. Don't need that right now. Now we want the height to be nine inches, so we turn it. This was the side we cut. Turn it once to the left. Okay, now we're gonna put this at nine inches. We don't have to add anything to this because there's no spine on the height. Just the height of the book. Okay. And cut that off. All right, so now we have our base. It's 12 and 3 eighths wide by 9 inches high. All right, I don't need this hipper trimmer right now. Get that out of the way. It's a little wrinkle and curled up, but it'll work. You could iron it if you so wish. I don't. Now I need my ruler. Now what we need are two score marks. I'm not gonna get out my scoreboard, I'm just gonna use my mat. I'm gonna line it up. Not line. Close as I can. And the side line here. I'm gonna get the measurement right. Okay, now I want to make a mark six inches from the side. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm going to make my score mark just a little bit to the side of that line. So we allow for that extra room I was talking about when we're folding. That's why we left an extra eighth of an inch. I'm just going to take my bone folder, go across a few times, and that'll give me a good enough score mark. And that was at six inches. And now we're going to make another line. Where's my mark? Three, four, five, six. That was six. Making sure I'm lined up again. Using the lines on my mat. Now we're gonna make one at six and a quarter. One, two, three, four, five, six. And half of this will be a quarter. This time I'm gonna go a little to the right of my quarter inch section. I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm making two score lines that are a quarter of an inch apart. Don't know if you can see them on there. There they are, yes. And I'm going to fold on the score lines carefully. I don't want to go off my line. There's that one. Now we have one on the side. Just hold on your score line. Once you get it started, it'll just find itself. Can't have both. Two score lines. Give them a good fold. 
So now we have a quarter of an inch spine on our base. I don't know if you can see that. So things are lining up. There's our spine. It's a quarter of an inch wide. And our sides are meeting up. So this should measure six inches from the edge. I turn the ruler the right way. Here we go. Six inches. Over by a little bit, but that's okay. Because like I said, we need that little bit of room. For our folds. And we put in our signature. So that's good, matching up. This edge is not quite so straight. That is straight this end for sure. No, they're even. It's just that <clears throat> being at the paper so wrinkled is a little hard to match up. Okay. So there's our base, a 12 and 3 eighths wide piece of paper, piece of grocery bag paper, by nine inches high, scored at six inches and six and a quarter, and we have our base. Now, um, I'm gonna show you the one I was working on. This is it. See, here's our bag on the inside. I had drawn lines when I was doing mine. Now I'll take, I'm going to take this off so I can show you how I get this on here. Nothing glued together yet. Okay, I'm going to open this out. Now here's where our binding pages are going to overlap. So these pages that I did, I did on my computer. I can show you this. Now this was in my computer program. Now I can't tell you to try and get this program because it's not available anymore. It was Microsoft's Digital Image Pro 10. This was the last update I got on this. I've been using this program since 2002, I would say. But I would think most graphic programs have the same features as this program. They're all very similar. I'm trying to learn Inkscape right now, so when I teach myself far enough that I can show you, I'll show you how to use that, but right now, Whatever graphics program you use, you open up an eight and a half by 11 inch piece of paper on your screen. And then I brought in, I made a square, a uh, rectangle, I'm sorry. I believe it's, let's see, nine inches plus a half and a half, 10 inches high by, you wanna overlap here, half an inch, six, and a quarter and a half. So I would say by seven inches wide. That's the darker rectangle that I made. I filled it in with a dark blue to match this. And then I brought in my pattern. And I kind of centered it on the rectangle because we want a half an inch all around for folding over to do the wrapped cover. So this is ten and a half by seven inches. Now, on my computer, on my program, I am able to, when I print, it prints the full size of the page. It doesn't leave borders. So being that's the case, I'm right up to the edges. Now, if you have a printer that doesn't do this, yours are going to be slightly smaller because they, I believe they leave like an eighth of an inch border around. But if you just move your rectangle, the dark rectangle, down and to the right a little bit, you can get the exact size you want. Remember I said we wanted 10 
by seven. So yours would be in centered more into the paper. And then print it to print the exact size. Okay, so we'd need two of those. So here are the ones that I printed. Made two of them exactly the same. There's nothing different between the front and the back cover. This is going to overlap here. And then I'll spot this will go over our spine. We'll trim all of this excess white off. And then we're going to fit it to our base that we made. You see like this? Now I'm going to show you on the one that I have how it's working on. Do my actual base. Here it is. So what you would do after you print your pages, let's set that out. You print your pages out. You have two of them. You cut them out along their edges. This one. And this is this one. Yes, okay. So what you're gonna do is if you remove your white border all around here, you will line them up. You would need now, this outer dark edge is going to get folded to the inside. So our actual cover is starting at this lighter blue. And I'll measure from there to here. This is six inches. And then we want a quarter of an inch. I would make it a little over a quarter of an inch. Six inches is to here. next light blue border that I have here, edge, would be just a little bit past a six and a quarter inch mark. And I would have the top, bottom, and the top lined up to here. They're even. And then these would get glued together. Put a little bit of glue on, a uh, glue stick I would use underneath, glue that down, lift up this piece, put your glue stick on the edge, glue that down so they're even, and then you would have your cover, such as this. This is my cover. As I said, this measures six inches. And my lines are over a little bit, but that's okay. So you're going to glue it down, like I said, and turn it over. And then you're going to take your base that you made. You're going to place it in here. The only thing you have to do when you start, you want to lift this up to see that the edge of your pattern is at the edge of your paper on the side and at the top. See at the top, I've allowed for the blue edging on here. So that's where I would fold over. Get it in there, making sure it's into the edge. And then gently start folding over. Don't give it a good crease yet until you're sure you're in the right spot. So you fold that over gently. You fold over the top. Make sure you're even. So you have my colors. The corner. This edge is even. And this edge is where I want it. 
top and the bottom are gonna have that edge. And then I bring it back and I'm gonna put clips on it. That side, which I know is in the right spot, and this side. And now I'm gonna flatten this out, make sure it's really straight and flat. And I'm gonna fold over this edge. And try to get that even with the edge of my paper. So it should be, it's not gonna be perfect. It's gonna have a little bit of blue border on this side here. But that's okay. It's gonna be up to the edge of your paper. Give that a fold, gentle fold. Now this should just automatically line up because you've already got it folded here. And now you do the bottom, same way. So you're gonna line up, make sure your pattern is in the right spot. And then I'm gonna clip it here and here. Okay, and I'll put a clip up here. fold over is this edge. I do the bottom, top and the bottom first. Sides fold it over last. And then as you can see on this one, it should be on top of that. What I've done is I've taken my paper cut off the edges. I mitered the corners just like we do when we do a cover on a mini album. Just miter the corners. Put your paper back. Put on your clip. And then you can do the same thing on the other side. And then this side. Move my clip over. I'm gonna cut off, miter the corners, almost up and almost to an eighth of an inch where that corner is. Wait, I'll show you. You see where this corner is? You want to leave like an eighth of an inch from the edge, so that we can make a neat corner on there. I'm gonna miter this one, even about an eighth of an inch. Hold it back up. Okay. Put it back where it was. Make sure everything's down flat. And then you have your cover. Now we're going to attach it. I'm going to take the whole thing apart. I'm only going to do one side at a time. And I'm going to start with, this is my, now well, I want the front cover. This is my front cover. This is my back cover. I'm going to start with this side. With the back cover, I'm going to open that up. I'm just going to lift this up. where my fold is and my spine. I think I need to unclip it here. There we go. Now I'm going to take my glue stick. I want to use a glue stick. If you use wet glue, it dries very hard. And that's going to give you a harder cover. Now I'm going to start putting my glue stick just on the inside of my fold lines. We're not going to do the outer edge yet. That'll be separate. And inside of this piece of the cover that goes over the spine, I'm going to fill this in almost completely, not totally. I want a good stick on this. 
especially at the corners. Okay, now I'm going to bring this piece back, starting in the center, pressing down, working your way from the center to the outer edge. something flat, it could be a credit card, an old store card, an old gift card, bone folder, and you want to make sure you press all the glue down. The corners, your edges, over here by the spine, all the way. I'm going to turn it over and press it from this side. And we don't want this coming off. This is our cover. We want it to stick. Okay. So we have one side glued down. I'm going to bring these up. And clip it way over here. so things don't move because I'm taking off these clips. Now I'm going to open this side up and I'm going to do the same thing. I can't have a clip here. It's in my way. Okay, I want to be able to lift this up. Now we're on the opposite side now. Gluing all the way into the spine edge all along that fold line, along the top fold line, and the side fold line. Getting the corners well. Now the inside. leave any big lumps of your glue in there. They'll show through the cover. If your glue stick comes up in a lump, just rub it in until it's flat. Okay, now again we're going to start, lift this up from the center. We're going to start pressing it down, outward to the side, so that we get it even without any bubbles or bumps in it. Away, pressing it down, and now taking your bone folder or whatever you're using, give it a good press. Now spread the glue around your glue stick. Give it a good press along the spine, top to bottom. it over. I'm going to rub it from this side. Corners down well. Okay. So now we have it. It's glued down. We haven't done the edges yet, but it's glued down. Now we have to find our spine again. It's over. There we go. I see a little area where I need some glue. Glue stick. Now don't worry about what the spine looks like because I have another piece I'm going to cover over the spine with after we finished the book. So it doesn't worry. Don't worry if you look, your glue is showing. We're going to cover the quarter and spine. Just want to make sure I have nothing popping up. Okay, that's down. 
Now I'm going to get my folds again. Same little spot here. Okay, that's good. Now I'm going to even them out. Make sure our book is straight. Sorry, I'm just having a little trouble finding my back fold line. Somehow I lost it. I'm going back to my inside of my book so I can find it. There it is. I'm going to crease it again. Pieces, quarter of an inch apart. There it is. We have our spine. As I said, when we're finished with the book, we're going to cover this up with a piece of decorative paper. So that will cover that up. That that will cover up the signature, the um, threads from when we sew in the signature, and it will cover up the spine. Okay. So now let's do the inside. This is my top. I know these white squares are at the top of my paper. I'm going to take off these clips. And I always do the top and the bottom first. I'm going to take my glue stick. I'm starting on one side here. I'm going to cover this with glue, glue stick. I'm going to go over the edge a little bit. Now I'm going to come down to this side. You're going to cover this whole piece. This was that extra border piece that you added onto your paper, that rectangle. So now we're going to fold this over to wrap our cover. Now we have a fold line already. So we're just going to bring it up and evenly lay it down. Take our bone folder. All the way across. Flatten that out. And now I'm going to do this side. All the way across. Covering this piece with glue, a little bit to the inside. Right here, I'm putting a little bit over this edge. Okay, now I'm going to bring it up, starting in the center. That piece up. This side up. Take a bone folder. Press it down. Get it a good press. Careful of your little seam in the middle. And all the way across. Now we're going to do the ends. Glue stick all over this piece. Now, if you don't want to get glue on your mat, you could put something underneath to protect it. A piece of paper. Okay, a little bit of glue on the edges. The corners. Now we're going to bring this up, starting in the center. Working our way out, all the way to the corner. In this corner. Now we're going to press it down. All the way. Put the corner really well. And that's that side. We're 
almost finished. Turn it around. Same thing on this end. A little bit over the, the bag. Glue well on the corners. You want to cover the whole thing. Starting in the center, you already have your fold lines from folding it before. Pressing it down. And give it a good burnish all the way to the corners. Making sure it stays down. Right. We have everything glued. So this is the cover of our book. This is the top of my book. We have our spine, quarter of an inch. Everything's lining up here. And this should be six inches wide. Or very close to it. Yes, six inches. Six inches wide by nine inches high. And that's how simple it is to make that cover. Now we're going to cover the inside with two separate sheets of paper. I'm just covering up my seams to make sure they don't come apart. Okay. So like I said, I'm going to make the inside liner, actually I could use this that I printed. I could cut this down so that I'm leaving about an eighth or, an eighth or a quarter of an inch around the edge. And that will cover the inside of my book. So I have these two pieces. That's what I'll use these for. And I'm gonna cut them. I'll do that offline, and I'll cover the inside of the book, and we'll be ready for the next step, which will be making our signatures, our pages, deciding on all the papers you want to use. Now I have some of my papers picked out. I picked out some that I specifically printed for this, and some that I've had from other projects. Let's see if I can get it out here. Now I have this paper holder that I made long ago, and in it I keep all my spare papers, papers I didn't use on all my projects. So I went through this already. I picked out some papers. This holds a lot of paper. I will show you in another video how I made this, but it does hold a lot of paper. Full size eight and a half by 11s, and extra smaller pieces that I've kept in here. Little pieces for pockets, little scraps, little strips. So it all fits in here nicely. Very easy to keep your paper in, and it's easy to find what you're looking for because you just flip through it. So I'll show you how I made this in another video. It comes very handy. I've had it several years, like I said. It's held up well. I can see here I need a piece of tape on this corner, but there is a lot of paper in here. It's probably like an inch and a quarter worth of paper. Some is cardstock, some is copy paper. So I went through there and I have all my papers picked out. So in the next video, we'll put together the signatures and we'll sew them in. And like I said, off camera, I will glue on my inner liners. So I'll show you when I come back how I did it. I feel a loose edge here, which I don't want. Make sure everything is stuck down well. Yeah. Okay, so that'll about do it. So, like I said, all from a paper bag. I can get at least two books like this size out of one bag. Plus, I would say one, two, maybe even 
two, three or four books this size you would get, besides the two big ones. So rather than going and finding chipboard or cardstock, if you would have used cardstock, it would make this much harder. Now I like the soft covers on these books. They tend to fold with the book. So as the book gets thicker, the covers will still wrap around your book, in other words. But when you put cardstock inside as the base or cardboard or chipboard, you have a very hard cover that tends to stay stiff. And this stays pliable and soft. Okay, so I hope you give it a try. Get out your paper bags. I'm sure you have grocery paper bags. And I'll be back the next video. If you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed already, please hit the subscribe button. And you'll be notified when I put up the next video on making the signature for the inside. Okay, so thank you for coming. I'll see you soon. Bye.